Thank you so much for joining us for CBN News. Watch MF from Graham ahead today. The top issue on the minds of Americans is gaining traction at the White House. President Biden dealing with a major economic and political problem, inflation, after the White House failed to see it coming. I think I was wrong then about um, the path that inflation um, would take. As I mentioned, there have been unanticipated and large shocks to the economy. Now with the midterm elections on the horizon, Democrats try to find a winning message as prices keep rising. A possible major development in the Middle East, normalizing relations between Israel and Saudi Arabia. We'll tell you what this breakthrough could mean. After the mass shooting in Uvalde, Texas and Buffalo, lawmakers from both parties get together to discuss possible gun reforms. There are more Republicans interested in talking about finding a path forward this time than I have ever seen since Sandy Hook. But there's still a great deal of skepticism. And our conversation with New York Times number one best-selling author, Johnny Christmas, about his new graphic novel, Swim Team. So one of the lessons of the book is that to, to, to try and try and try again. We'll hear about the book critics call a warm-hearted story of perseverance, friendship, and more. And nearly 50 years after Billy Graham preached the gospel in Seoul, South Korea, a team of Korean prayer warriors comes to the United States to return the favor and pray for America. All those stories and more ahead today on CBN Newswatch. This is CBN Newswatch. And we begin with inflation. As prices continue to soar, President Biden is focusing on the economy. He met with the head of the Federal Reserve Tuesday in an effort to show he is working to bring relief from rising prices. Charlene Aaron is on our top story. In an Oval Office meeting with Federal Reserve Chairman Jerome Powell, the president said his top goal is fighting inflation and highlighted the agency's role. My plan is to address inflation. It starts with a simple proposition. Respect the Fed. Right now, that means supporting a series of hikes in interest rates. Critics charge the administration is late to the game. Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen admitting she was slow to recognize the danger last year when she said the risk of inflation was small and manageable. I think I was wrong then about um, the path that inflation um, would take. This as Americans are struggling with skyrocketing prices. Food, gas, everything is hard for you to make a living and go to work. Gas prices keep reaching record highs, today hitting $4.67 per gallon. One station in Los Angeles charging over $8 per gallon. As prices climb, the president's poll numbers are plunging. Voters are angry about the state of the economy heading into the midterm elections, putting Democrats' control of the House and Senate at risk. The White House plans a month-long focus on the economy, an attempt to show the president's dedication to fighting inflation. CBN chief political analyst David Brody says the move lacks substance. I mean, this feels very much like a playbook from the White House, right? It's June month, uh, or it's June, so therefore it's going to be, you know, uh, breakthrough inflation month, and they're going to have some sort of theme involved, and here comes the op-ed, and here comes uh, certain press conferences and policy initiatives and executive orders. Meanwhile, the unemployment rate dropped to 3.6 percent in April, but it might be too little too late. A new Gallup poll found nearly half of Americans called the country's economic conditions poor. Charlene Aaron, CBN News. Our CBN News financial editor, Drew Parkhill, I like to call Drew Money, is here with us now for more on the impact of inflation. The Treasury Secretary, as we heard, said she was wrong about inflation. What about the rest of the administration? The administration, Ephraim, was wrong. The administration was wrong on this for months, mm -hmm. okay? They had repeated warnings before they undertook their big COVID uh, relief plan, mm -hmm. okay? They were warned by top Democratic economists, Larry Summers and so forth, don't do this. This is big spending. This is going to fuel the worst inflation in a generation. That's exactly what happened. They were warm for months. They were slow to pick up on this issue. And only now, it's a big threat to them politically, and only now are they saying, oh, yeah, we're on it. We're going to do something about it. But it's really too late to start acting now. What makes inflation such a powerful political issue? You know, it's the ultimate pocketbook issue. If inflation is going up at 
and you get a raise of 4%, that means your standard of living, I'm speaking in averages now, is going down 4%. And when we're talking about 8% inflation, that doesn't mean things like, let's say, gasoline, which could be up like 50%, food prices, which could be up more. So the things that people really have to have are really going up. So inflation is the ultimate pocketbook issue. It's a huge threat to the Democrats because they're in power and they know this. And if the Republicans take the House or the House and the Senate, then President Biden's presidency and his agenda is all but dead. We heard a line from the president that I didn't get, understand quite. He said that he will defer to the Federal Reserve. What can they do? Well, what he, he's doing a couple things there. In a sense, he's probably playing a little CYA, saying, hey, it's not my fault, it's up to the Fed, mm -hmm. which is to a large extent true. I mean, there are things he could do, things he could have done to bring down gas prices and so forth, but he hasn't done that. Mm -hmm. So what he's saying is, is the Federal Reserve's job is to fight inflation, and that's basically, to a large extent, true. It's not completely true, but mm -hmm. they have to raise interest rates to slow things down. But the problem with that, Ephraim, mm -hmm. is you want to put interest rates higher than the rate of inflation. Well, right now, if you've got inflation running at 3%, Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm sorry, if inflation's at 8% and interest rates are at 3%, you're going to have to really raise rates if inflation stays at 8%, and Absolutely. that's a real problem. That would be real, real damage to the economy. Real quick, are we facing the possibility of a recession? It's a possibility. It's not guaranteed. What the Federal Reserve is hoping for is, to, is that inflation will come down over time as supply chain issues and so forth ease up and that rates will they won't have to raise rates as much but that may not happen we could have a recession uh, sometime later this year in the next year it may be pretty mild but it just depends on how long it takes to really get this price situation under control inflation is just about the worst thing that can happen to mm -hmm. an economy indeed true park hill thank you so much for your insight I always appreciate it I want to turn now to an historic development in the Middle East. Israel and the United Arab Emirates signed a free trade agreement Tuesday, the first of its kind that Israel has, conc has concluded with an Arab country. The UAE agreed to normalize relations with Israel in a U.S. broker deal in 2020. It was the first of the agreements brokered by the Trump administration known as the Abraham Accords that Israel eventually concluded with four Arab nations. Since then, the two countries have boosted cooperation in a number Number of economic sectors. The UAE's ambassador to Israel called it an unprecedented achievement. And another very positive development could be in the works in the Middle East. A media report suggests the Biden administration is working toward an agreement that could normalize relations between Saudi Arabia and Israel. While the White House won't confirm the report, it would be a significant breakthrough in the region. CBN Middle East Bureau Chief Chris Mitchell explained what's behind this optimism. The negotiations reported by Axios would transfer control of two islands from Egypt to Saudi Arabia. Israel is involved because of a 1979 peace agreement with Egypt. CBN News asked Israel's ambassador to the United Nations, Gilad Erdan, about the report. I cannot comment directly, but uh, we know uh, uh, it's not a secret that we celebrate the Abram Accords. Uh, Israel is a peace-seeking country and we want to expand this new circle of peace and we hope that Saudi Arabia will be one of the next countries to join this circle of peace. We pray for it. One question being asked is, why now? Egypt, Saudi Arabia and America, they are strategical uh, partners. It's very important for America to be present in the Middle East and have a good relation with those two countries. Former Israeli ambassador to Egypt, Zvi Mazel, says while these three countries need each other, the Biden administration has seen a shift in relations. The problem is that, in principle, the United States has decided, and it was said many times, to, to get away from the, from the Middle East. Saudi involvement in the 2018 assassination of journalist Jamal Khashoggi strained relations with the U.S. According to Mazel, however, compromise could happen for the sake of standing against Iran. Facing Iran is the Sunni countries led by Saudi Arabia, with the Emirates, with Bahrain, with Egypt, absolutely. But they need also Israel because Israel is the only country among them that has an interest to face even with violence, even with war, Iran. 
Mazel says every country has its own interest, and one way to unite them would be for Biden to build upon the Abraham Accords, engineered by the Trump administration. Those agreements saw the United Arab Emirates, Bahrain, Sudan, and Morocco normalize relations with Israel. They gave them a very important uh, aim to be together on economic and uh, security basis, and it was a big success. Now Biden, since his election, he has done nothing to encourage other Arab countries to join those Abraham Accords. Mazel says Biden took a positive step by keeping the Iranian Revolutionary Guard Corps on the terror list, although negotiations to sign a nuclear deal are ongoing. Going back to the GCPO, no, absolutely, nuclear agreement to Iran is not an opening, absolutely not. It's the beginning of the end and a kind of corridor to war. Chris Mitchell, CBN News, Jerusalem. Coming up in the wake of the tragic mass shootings in Uvalde, Texas and Buffalo, the discussions over possible changes in gun laws are now underway in Congress. We're going to take a look at the proposals being considered and whether both parties can come to an agreement. We've got that story when we come back. The fight rages on over gun control. Lawmakers on Capitol Hill wrestling with what comes next after Uvalde. Democrats in control of the House and Senate are weighing what gun policies to ideally put forward against what in reality could garner enough votes to pass. CBN Capitol Hill correspondent Matt Galka reports on that. Congress is on a scheduled holiday break this week, but that's not stopping a number of key lawmakers from trying to work on and hash out potential new bipartisan gun control legislation in the wake of the Texas school shooting. And that's the sentiment for many across the country, hoping to prevent an all too familiar scene like what played out in Uvalde, Texas last week from happening again. The overall focus for doing something is on Washington. Pain is palpable and I think a lot of it's unnecessary. So. I'm going to continue to push, and uh, we'll see how this works. But what Congress can or will do is up in the air. Connecticut Senator Chris Murphy set to meet virtually with a group of Democrats and Republicans Tuesday for continued discussions on potential new laws. There are more Republicans interested in talking about finding a path forward this time than I have ever seen since Sandy Hook. Texas Senator John Cornyn is leading the Republican side of trying to reach some compromise on gun control. But common ground could be hard to come by, as fellow Texas Senator Ted Cruz slammed more restrictive gun control efforts at last week's NRA convention. To Washington Democrats, the answer is so-called universal background checks and banning so-called assault rifles. And the more aggressive among them call for banning all firearms. Leading Democrats hope to act on multiple bills, including raising the age to buy some semi-automatic rifles from 18 to 21, banning the sale of high-capacity magazines, restricting hard-to-trace ghost guns or guns built at home, and a ban on bump stocks, the attachments that help make guns rapid fire. Now, if those bills do end up passing the House, it's very unlikely that package would get the 60 votes it needs in the Senate, which is why so much focus is being put on those current bipartisan talks going on. Congress returns next week. At the Capitol, Matt Gelka, CBN News. Still ahead, our conversation with New York Times bestselling author Johnny Christmas about his new graphic novel, Swim Team, which is being praised by critics as a warm-hearted story of perseverance, friendship, and so much more. We'll hear from him right after this. Johnny Christmas, a number one New York Times bestselling graphic novelist, has a new book and a new message behind it. It is called Swim Team. The man behind the work joined us in Studio 5 to share more. I draw a few comic book series, uh, Sheltered Pisces uh, and uh, Angel Catbird, as well as uh, Firebug. I think what's most exciting to me is process, the creation of the work, um, having the work uh, 
come to life and, and the sort of uh, interplay between what I had for lunch and what I'll be drawing in the afternoon and how those things day to day sort of influence the work that's coming off the line. So it starts with an idea and uh, then I sort of play around with it. I let it sit with me for a bit. The beauty of having a lot of uh, uh, projects on the go is that while I'm drawing one or inking another, I can sort of be conceiving another. And Johnny Christmas joins us now. So let's dive right in. What is the heart of this story? Yeah, Swim Team is about a uh, young kid, Bree, who moves to a, a Floridian town uh, that I, I made up called Palmetto Shores. Uh, and that swim crazy, everyone's crazy about this town. But Bree has a secret, she doesn't know how to swim. So she uh, is in this scenario where she's kind of avoiding this class. And uh, one day, one fateful day, she falls into the pool. And, um, and at that point, uh, an elderly neighbor helps her and then teaches her how to swim. Black children are actually eight times more likely to drown than whites. Why is this? Uh, due to um, issues of access, uh, there aren't as many pools in black communities. And this is an issue that started um, generations ago. Uh, that was a big issue in place. And so we know that parents who don't know how to swim are less likely to have children who know how to swim. And that ripples down through generations. And then you have a situation in which um, so many black youngsters don't have uh, um, access to water, uh, access to uh, to pools in a in a um, kind of regular way, so that they can get comfortable enough, so that they can have a full and rewarding life in, in the pool. And um, and these are these are issues that that can be reversed. Um, we can have more access for young people, uh, but it's it's a very big issue. Um, it's an issue that affected me. I almost drowned as a as a young person, and it's a, a big reason as to why I wanted to tell this story. Now, you use puzzle pieces to help tell this story. How does that work? I wanted to, uh, our a young protagonist, uh, Bree, had this question uh, of, because uh, she, she absorbed the stereotype as well that black people don't swim because in her neighborhood, no one swam because there were no pools. Um, so uh, her elderly neighbor, Miss Etta, uh, kind of confronts that and says, well, I know I'm black and I know how to swim. And so little by little, she's dismantling uh, this idea that Bree has adopted. And um, one of the, the motifs that she uses is she, she uh, uh, Miss Etta is a big fan of jigsaw puzzles. So she thinks of uh, black swimming culture as a jigsaw puzzle. Um, from time immemorial, black people swam uh, and it was like a puzzle. But if you start pulling pieces out of a jigsaw puzzle, you start losing the the mosaic. You, you you miss the whole point of the entire thing. So by all these um you know restrictive um, measures that were put into place, um, you know lack of access to pools and beaches, little by little pieces were being pulled out. So uh, Miss Etta's thing is that she wants to put Bree back into the puzzle, and and I think that's what we can do. We can get all, all our young people back into a puzzle so we can see the entire picture. This is a story that encourages us all to try new things, correct? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, uh, Brie is very good at math, so she's very trepidatious at things that she doesn't, that she's not really good at. So, um, and swimming being one of them. So one of the lessons of the book is that to, to, to try and try and try again that you're not gonna be good at, at a thing right off the bat. Most people aren't good at, at almost anything right off the bat. But if you do it enough times, then it becomes yours. It becomes your special way of doing a thing, you know? So it can become your thing. And once it becomes your thing, then you can uh, grow and change and improvise on it. But you have to do it over and over and over again, even though it's hard at first. Swim Team is available wherever books are sold. For more uplifting entertainment news, be sure to join us for an all-new show tonight. Pastor and best-selling author Greg Laurie is with us with a new book. Recording artist Marika Chisholm is with us as well with new music. And we have your first look at the film, Ms. Marvel. You can catch Studio 5 on CBN's news channel tonight at 8.30 Eastern. You can also find it on the CBN News app. Coming up, coinciding with the anniversary of a 1973 Billy Graham crusade in South Korea that saw more than 75,000 people come to Christ. Hundreds of South Korean prayer warriors have come to the United States to pray for America. We've got details on that when we come back. Stay with us. 
Hundreds of South Korean prayer warriors are coming to America this week. Teams with the World Prayer Center in Seoul will visit 20 cities starting today through Sunday. The timing coincides with the anniversary of a 1973 Billy Graham crusade in Seoul that saw more than 75,000 people come to Christ. Now the Koreans want to return the favor by praying for revival in America. The U.S. group Project Pray is sponsoring America's prayer meeting, calling on American churches across the country to hold prayer services all this week, leading up to Pentecost Sunday. You can get an in-depth in -depth information about this tour and Billy Graham's longtime prayer for America at CBN News. Com. Time now for your Wednesday word, and today's word is purpose. Know this, God has a purpose and a plan for everything you experience. There is nothing wasted with him, and never forget, he has the power to make all things new and to make all things work together for your good and for his glory. With that word, make this a wonderful Wednesday, and I pray that it is a day that is filled with purpose. That is going to do it for this edition of CBN News Watch. Remember, you can always find more of our news programs on the CBN News Channel at any time or online at CBNNews.com. We'd love to know what you think about the stories you've seen here today. You can email us, newswatch at CBN.com, or you can reach out and touch us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. We look forward to seeing you right back here, same time tomorrow. Goodbye, God bless.